Many dogs end up with rescue groups or in animal shelters simply because someone didn't want or couldn't afford to take care of them when their health takes a turn for the worse. Now, Jenny, as a bulldog rescue group, you must see this all the time. We see it all the time. A lot of the dogs that we get out of pounds or shelters have, by the time we get them, severe issues mm. like, you know, eye issues, ACL surgeries, which yes. is a massive surgery, and also luxating patellas, which is the kneecap rolling in and out. Skin issues are another huge mm. thing for bulldogs. It's this little one's story before he runs off. <laughs> Peppy came to us when he was five weeks old. He's now 18 weeks old. He's actually got spina bifida, which yes. is a congenital spinal defect. So the vertebrae doesn't cover the spinal cord mm -hmm. and it usually is happens right down the bottom of their spine near their tail. And Peppy can't walk. We actually have three spina bifida dogs. Peppy is a bit of a different class. Yes. It's a bit, a bit more severe for him. He can't use his back legs, so he has to go off to hydrotherapy yes. sessions and have a lot of stretching. Yes. We're very, very lucky that Christine, who is his foster carer, um, has two of our other dogs, which are both special needs as well. So she has to do a lot of exercise and there's a lot of nappy changing, but yes. as you can see, he's one of the happiest dogs on the planet. He is indeed. I mean, because a lot of people just give up on dogs like little Peppy. Why do you guys fight so hard for them? Look, if a, dog, if a bulldog comes out under our radar and we think we can help it, then we will. It's yes. as simple as that. You know, we, we fundraise to get them all the care they need and it's important for us to use the money in the right place. What is next for little Peppy before he runs off? I think we're gonna lose him. We've lost Peppy. him. <laughs> Peppy's next step is to, we're going to get a wheelchair made mm -hmm. and we have to get that made in America to suit him. We're not quite sure, we've got to ask the experts at what age he can go into the chair because we didn't want to put him in one too soon. We wanted to give him an opportunity yes. to be able to walk. So look, it probably isn't gonna happen, but he's, he's got his own way. Right. <laughs> He's got his own way of walking now, so you know, he, and he hops along pretty good. So we didn't want to upset the psyche of him. So, uh, so into the chair for him. Yes, and I think he'll work it out fabulously. Oh, he'll flourish. And so the really important message here is, you know, if you're looking to adopt a dog, don't overlook these guys that might, you know, they might have something that isn't, you know, they might not be on four legs like other dogs are, but it doesn't mean that they're not beautiful pets. And in fact, they sometimes make the most wonderful pets because this guy is so entertaining. Absolutely. <laughs> like he's a bit of a clown, this fella. Like as you can see, like nothing stops him. He's quite happy to just, you know, roll around like a normal little pup would do. Thank you very much, Jenny. You're doing great work. If you'd like to support the work of Minnie's Bulldog Rescue, visit their website, minniesbulldogrescue.com. And if you'd like to find out more about the Petspiration Foundation, who is helping bring us this story to you, then visit their website. The key to dog training or any behaviour modification is finding what motivates your dog the most so they listen to you, follow your instructions or perform a behaviour you're wanting from them. For most dogs, this is food or treats, but it can also be a game like tug of war, throwing the ball or their favourite toy, sometimes even a pat or a tummy rub. This can change though day to day, even hour to hour, so it's important to pay attention to what they are responding to most at that time. Also, if you feed your dog a kibble or a cooked roll and give it to them every morning in a bowl, then using it in your training really isn't going to be very motivational, is it? Sit, das, good boy. Unless you have a Labrador, of course. Instead, measure out their daily food intake and use it in training instead. If using treats, it's really useful to have a hierarchy of treats available so you can use it to really improve your dog's response and make it more reliable, faster or more accurate. For example, you might use these small training treats like the Vita Pet ones as they're easy to keep in your pocket and also use on your walks. They're also great if you're working from home and you catch your dog doing a behaviour that you'd like to encourage more of as you can easily toss them one even if you're on a video conference call. Oh, hello, Dars. <laughs> if you're at the park and your dog is in a distance away or they're easily distracted, you can squeak a ball or toy and wave a chicken or milky stick around to grab their attention and that really makes it worth their while running back to you ASAP. For a higher value reward, well, with most dogs you can't go past chicken, so these chicken tenders can be broken up and dished out when your dog does something particularly well. And they don't say winner winner chicken dinner for nothing, so using roast chicken as the ultimate jackpot is sure to keep your dog on their toes. Well 
their paws actually. Remember, if you're using treats in training, they shouldn't account for any more than 10% of your dog's required total calorie intake each day. Do vary it and use praise, games and toys as well to really keep your dog engaged and guess what's coming next for that best performance. You can check out the Vita Pet Treat range on their website and Vita Pet Central for more training tips and tricks. And yes, Darcy, we know you love your ball. Hey, what's your brother like? Anxious dogs can suffer from chronic stress, which decreases their quality of life and leads to many common dog behaviour problems. Anxiety traits can include noise sensitivity and phobias, separation related behaviours, commonly known as separation anxiety, fear of different surfaces and heights, a lack of impulse control, compulsive disorders and more. In a recent study out of Finland, over 72% of dogs had some kind of highly problematic behaviour as a result of anxiety, with the most common problems including excessive barking, inappropriate elimination, destructiveness, aggression and fearfulness. It's also a major reason for many dogs being relinquished to animal shelters or euthanised. Behaviour has a genetic or inherited component, predisposing an animal to behave in a certain way. It's also influenced by all previous experiences, particularly in those important first 16 weeks of a puppy's life, known as the socialisation period, as well as the current situation or environment that the dog is in. The anxiety comes from anticipation of danger, of an undesirable behaviour or an outcome, even events that we think are normal or even when the outcome of an event is positive, dogs with anxiety disorders have trouble taking in that information. There's a problem with how their brain functions. It is a medical problem and it often does require medication. That's why it's so important to address any behaviour problems as soon as possible and seek out the support of your vet or a qualified dog trainer. For very mild cases or for when medication has been prescribed, behaviour modification using positive reinforcement training can assist and help build up their confidence. Confidence. He's got a bit of confidence here. Along with environmental enrichments, that's things like interactive toys and exercise that keeps their brains and bodies active. Using calming products like natural herbs, pheromone sprays or thunder shirts can provide additional support during stressful events such as thunderstorms. You must also try to avoid the things that trigger their anxiety as much as possible. We don't want them to rehearse the unwanted behaviour or it gets reinforced. If your dog is nervous around other dogs, don't take them to the dog park. They don't want want or need to be there. If they're nervous around children or strangers, don't let people put their hand out or pat your dog. Quickly and calmly just get them out of those situations or politely ask them just to ignore your dog. Always promote calmness in your dog, ensure they get enough sleep and when they are laying around peacefully or enjoying some time out, quietly whisper good dog to quietly reinforce that desired behaviour but make sure you don't interrupt them. By addressing your dog's anxiety, you will be improving not only their mental well-being but also their physical health. Behaviour problems lessen and both you and your dog will have a much happier life. Talk to your local pet stock vet or puppy school if you suspect your dog is anxious or discuss any other behavioural concerns you might have. Become a Petstock Rewards member and earn Petstock dollars on thousands of products and services that can be redeemed on anything in store. T's and C's apply. Visit the website for details. As a dog owner, chances are you've caught your pooch dragging their bottom across the carpet or grass from time to time. This classy little move is known as scooting and there are many reasons why dogs do this, but the most common is to relieve the discomfort of irritated anal glands. The dog has two of these little anal glands either side of their bottom, which empty a small amount of very pungent, sorry guys, material onto each stool as it passes. The smell is unique to each dog and helps mark their territory. It's basically like leaving a little personal bit of information for the next dog to sniff and decipher. Sometimes these glands don't empty effectively and if scooting doesn't resolve the problem, a nasty abscess can develop. There's lots of causes for ineffective emptying, including anatomical variation, abnormal stools, skin issues, and previous anal gland trauma. A less common cause for scooting is bottom irritation from intestinal worms. So if you notice your dog persistently scooting or even licking the area, take them to the vet to identify the cause. Your vet can gently express the glands if they're becoming impacted and prevent an abscess forming. Whilst manual expression is required in many dogs on a regular basis, 
it's important that it's performed under the supervision of a vet, as the sacs are really delicate and injure easily when squeezed. Your vet will also be able to detect the presence of anal gland tumours. If your dog is experiencing recurrent and frequent anal gland impaction, it's important to discuss underlying causes and possible solutions with your vet. Diet changes, supplements, fibre and probiotics may be suggested. In some cases, and I've owned a dog that required this, surgery is required to remove the glands and ensure your dog's parasite protection is up to date to help rule out intestinal worms as the cause of the scooting. NextGuard Spectra provides your dog with the most complete parasite protection available against external and internal parasites, all in one tasty monthly chew. It's pretty tasty, isn't it? Yeah. Moving to aged care often means that people are forced to give up their beloved pet. For the luckier ones, they end up with family and friends, while others end up in animal shelters or they're euthanised. Fortunately, some homes are recognising the importance of this human-animal bond, and there's a new campaign to help promote pet-friendly policies in the aged care sector. Sam, why did LifeView decide to allow residents to bring their pets here? Well, LifeView, we believe that pets are part of your family and you don't want to be separated from your family. It's a big enough change to come into care. And we also find that residents are much happier and healthier yes. and they deteriorate less quickly if they've got that loved pet with them. So why do you feel that other facilities don't embrace this? Um, because there is a bit of work involved. Mm. We have special policies around bringing your pet with you. That's important that the resident can still look after that pet or their family can come in and assist to look after mm. the pet. And when the resident can no longer look after the pet, that the family do take that pet home. You're working with the Companion Animal Network and their Pet Friendly Aged Care campaign. How are you guys involved? So we're assisting the Companion Animal Network with the policies, mm -hmm. um, the procedures and just general guidance. Daphne, not only have you got Annie with you, I see you've got your great granddaughter here yes. today. <laughs> yes, like Tell us how important is it to you to have Annie here? Oh, absolutely. Can't be without her. She's so good with everybody here. She goes to see all the ladies, <laughs> pats them, and oh, she loves them. <laughs> How would you have felt if you couldn't have had Annie come here with you? Oh, I don't think I would have come. She loves everybody, patting her and loving her and all that. Oh, thank you, Daphne. Thanks, Beatrix. You gonna take Annie for a little walk? Yeah. <laughs> If people at home really want to push and help with this social change, what should they be doing? If they're looking at putting somebody into care, ask if they take pets. Mm. If not, ask why. Or if not, find a provider that does. Yes. They can also speak to their local politicians. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is get in touch with the Companion Animal Network yes. and share their experiences. That's right, the more we tell these stories then hopefully the more people will start pushing for this. If you'd like to find out more about the aged care sector and making it pet friendly, visit the petfriendlyagecare.com.au website and for more health and wellbeing tips, visit hif.com.au. Thanks Sam. You're welcome. <laughs> When it comes to grooming our dogs at home, there are some common mistakes that owners, including myself, can unintentionally make, which can lead to pain or discomfort for our pets. The first is not getting your dog's nails trimmed regularly and allowing them to grow so long that they become painful for your dog to walk on. On the flip side, it is cutting the quick of the nail. That's the red part you can see in a white nail, which contains a nerve that causes pain when cut and a lot of blood. This results in many dogs becoming very anxious about having their nails trimmed. So if you are unsure, take them to a groomer or vet in between professional full grooms. The next mistake many owners make is over washing their dog, which can dry out the oils that they need for a healthy skin and coat. So research the ideal grooming schedule for your dog's breed, because it can be really different between them. There are some deodorising and conditioning sprays in the DGG range that you can use instead on your dog in between those washes. Some people 
people use human shampoo or one filled with nasty chemicals which can disrupt the acidity levels, leaving dogs vulnerable to parasites and bacteria, not to mention making their skin dry and flaky. Look for a natural shampoo that is pH balanced for pets, is soap free, contains no nasties like SLS or parabens and is full of natural botanicals that will nourish your dog's skin and coat like those in the DGG range. Be mindful that the water isn't too hot or cold either, just like you would with a baby, put your hand under and make sure it feels okay. Not rinsing the shampoo off properly is also another common mistake, as is allowing shampoo and water to go into a dog's eyes and ears. It's important to cover these and instead simply wipe down the inside of their ears and under their eyes with a damp cloth. For breeds with long floppy ears, good ear care is really important, so talk to your vet or groomer. Not brushing your dog regularly, washing them with matted hair, and not removing the undercoat before wetting those with double coats are also all common mistakes that result in painful, tangled matted hair that can also become a breeding ground for bacteria and infection. Regular brushing also helps to keep your dog clean, distributes oils through the coat, prevents matting, increases circulation and reduces shedding. The rule of thumb is once a week, then an extra brush for every centimetre of their hair per week. So if you've got a dog like Vindi, it might change as it grows. Then they're shaving a dog with a double coat. Think it will help keep them cool when it's actually the undercoat and not the outer one that needs to be removed. And finally, make sure you dry your dog off properly and avoid brushing them when wet to help make it easier and less painful. Use a detangling spray to help, especially if they have long curly locks. To find the right shampoo, brushes and other grooming tools to help avoid some of these mistakes, check out the DGG grooming range at your local pet specialty store or visit the DGG website. This week's breeding focus is the gentle giant of the dog world, the Newfoundland, affectionately known as the Newfie, like our wonderful big boy Hugo here. As the name suggests, they originated in Newfoundland on the east coast of Canada. And given their strength, their thick double coat and big webbed paws, they were used to pull carts of wood from the forest and fishing nets out of the water. The Newfie is a giant dog breed that can weigh up to around 60 kilos. I think but he's about 70. Yes. <laughs> Gentle and placid, they have a wonderful nature, so make fantastic family pets and generally love children. Although you need to watch toddlers around them, you can easily be bowled over just due to a Newfie's sheer strength and size. And you can never tell them what to do, so thanks Tess for that one. We're not going to try and hold him here. These no. guys love being around humans, so if no one is home throughout the day, they're not for you. As a working dog breed, they are great to train and learn quickly, so start early with the obedience training and setting boundaries. They need plenty of mental stimulation and they excel at dog sports, particularly water-based tasks. Yes, in addition to lots of love and affection, Newfies need at least 30 minutes of exercise daily. While short spurts of low impact exercise is important for any growing puppy, it's particularly important for large and giant dog breeds that grow quickly but over a longer period of time. And this helps avoid joint problems later in life. I have to mention, of course, that if you are a neat freak or can't handle drooling, then don't get a new thing. No. Their jaw and mouth structure was designed to allow them to breathe while working in the water. So drooling, yes, is an inherent part of the breed. <laughs> They're very thick coat needs a daily brush or at least two thorough sessions a week to prevent mats and keep the skin and coat healthy between professional grooms. They are not a cheap breed to look after either given their size and the food bill will be big. It sure <laughs> will and throughout all life stages large and giant breed dogs have different nutritional requirements compared to small and medium breeds. As mentioned they grow quicker but for longer so it's important that their diet contains lower energy and specific calcium and protein levels to help ensure they don't grow faster than what their bones can support. As with all giant dog breeds, they can be prone to hip and elbow dysplasia and osteochondrosis disecans or OCD, which is a disease that affects the bone just underneath the cartilage and it results in pain and lameness. Other health problems may include lip fold infections, eyelid disorders, cherry eye, and like many older dogs, arthritis. That's why it's so important, isn't it, Mel, to be aware of breed-specific health considerations before getting a dog to ensure that you are well prepared. That's right, you need to take everything into consideration. Especially All that slobber. Wow, <laughs> I'm glad he got you, not me. <laughs> to find out how HIF pet insurers can help your pet in times of need, visit hif.com.au. <laughs> 
Considering whether your food is bursting with life force or not is something you may not have thought about before when making your food choices, let alone for your pets. Given this makes a massive difference to its nutritional value, I reckon it's something we need to know more about, which is why I'm joined by Dr. Edward, the healing vet. Edward, many pet owners are still feeding their dogs and cats a diet in highly processed dry and wet foods. How is this impacting on their health? Not well. In fact, I think the best way to explain that is to talk about the differences I see in my practice when I get animals that are on a processed diet off it. What we see is shinier coat, reduction in itching and inflammation, weight loss, and generally just a whole lot happier, healthier, more vital animal. Obviously we know that kibble needs to be you know, cooked at high temperatures and it has a lot of starch so that it binds together, but why is this food irradiated as well? So the irradiation process is when they basically zap the food with high intensity radiation and the reason for this is to sterilise the food to kill all the bacteria in it. Now the problem with this is that it also kills the life force in the food and turns it into what I call a dead food. The thing is, it doesn't kill all the bacteria either, does it? Not generally. Something like 72 times by weight processed food is recalled due to contamination with bacteria than raw foods. Why then are vets still, you know, prescribing this for their clients all the time? I think it's because a lot of the education of the vets is driven by these massive multinational, multi-billion dollar processed food companies. Mitzi and Pearl get a fresh, raw, whole foods, buff mm -hmm. diet. They've been on that for about five or six years. It just has made such a difference to their well-being, it's not funny. And for our new viewers, do you want to explain what BARF entails? Biologically appropriate raw food, which is what Big Dog is, basically. That's right, and what we've got here, we've got the muscle meat, the bones, sardines are always really good. Veggies. Yes, lots of healthy foods. All that good stuff that obviously has got a life force in yes. it. Yes. And it's much better for our pets as well. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, thanks for joining us. And uh, if you want to know more about what Edward does and some of the great work there, visit thehealingvet.com. And to learn more about the Big Dog raw food diets and how it can benefit your pet, visit their website. Would you like to win a Pawson prize pack worth over $2,000? One lucky person will win a year's supply of Vita Pet treats, Big Dog Pet Foods, Next Guard Spectrum monthly shoes, a $250 pet stock gift voucher, DGG grooming and apparel, and a year's subscription to Dog TV. Plus, there's six consolation prizes featuring my latest book, World of Dogs, with a Vita Pet treat bundle. To enter, sign up to our e news and tell us the name of one of the charities featured this series. All entries will receive a free ebook on how to create a happy, healthy dog, so visit poochesatplay.com. That brings us to the end of this week's episode, but there's plenty more information and entertainment on the Pooches at Play website and social media platforms. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.